Hey guys, Taylor here with James from Genesis VR. We just experienced the, uh, a new way of experiencing the internet through with the Oculus and a control, also a keyboard. Uh -huh. Now, uh, explain a little more about Janus VR, what it is. Okay, so Janus VR essentially makes the internet virtual reality ready. That's the goal of the project. Ambitious goal, though it may be. But <laughs> So just picture the web instead as being just these URLs with hyperlinks, instead as <laughs> instead, instead as an, an interconnected set of spaces that you can seamlessly traverse via these portals. This makes everything very accessible. So I think this is actually going to be an ideal platform for creating and sharing VR experiences, especially with existing web developers for two reasons. One is that it leverages a lot of existing technology, you know, the infrastructure of the web. And secondly, it relies a lot on a lot of knowledge people already have, web development. So. That's the pitch, I guess. Yeah, yeah so um, you ex you show me websites like Reddit, uh, Live Concert, mm -hmm. and some games. Yeah. Um, now, that was amazing. You know, the, the three look, the, was it ZZ Top Concert, I want to say? Yeah, so um, the uh, the streaming concert you saw was by uh, VRLive.TV, kind of one of our partners. And uh, they, uh, they streamed it from the Roxy. It was a charity concert back in January here in LA. ZZ Top was there, Slash was there, it was like Billy Gibbons kind of a cool thing and then about 30 or 40 people converged in Janus inside this spherical amphitheater to watch. So it worked out. It was, it was cool. It was a lot of fun. You know, also as far as gaming, we did a, uh, a first person Frogger, which was the first, it was, it was a different way of playing Frog all together. Not, not top down, but the virtual, it's like left to right, um, getting killed by cars and falling in the water. Um, what do you see as far as, do you think that maybe an 8-bit games are easier to play or with this than, uh, than rather than uh, the newer ones? So, I mean, I think a lot of people just love the classics too, right? So some of the retro games have really cool core mechanics and it's kind of fun to experiment or play with what those might be like in VR. Um, shout out to a guy who goes by user Mr. Mobius on Reddit who actually made that particular room you're talking about with the VR Frogger. He prides himself because it's actually pixel perfect when viewed from above. You're actually playing inside, unbeknownst to you maybe, you're actually inside this larger arcade machine playing that game. So you picture people coming in and watching you. <laughs> He's got knocked. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you can picture people coming in and actually collaborate playing these games with you. We've got first person shooters in there, air hockey style games all manner of things. Virtual Boy games are in there, like Mario Tennis that have been recreated, just with a little bit of extended HTML, like an XML-like language and some JavaScript, so. Right on, now with the uh, state of age with people hanging out with their friends online, playing games, is there a way that people can uh, hook up together and hang out and enjoy the experience together? Absolutely, so there's a very heavy social VR component. Um, so beyond just the you know HTTP servers that we have, we rely on what we call like the present servers, and these actually maintain a social layer, of social VR layer on top of the existing 2D web. This allows us to carry on a conversation where there's positional audio support, text chat support, I can use my hands and gesture, you can see all the motions that I'm making. So all that richness, trying to you know bring the man as much into the machine as possible, to make that you know very 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 immersive in the end yeah yeah I also noticed that um, what was available was you had a keyboard you had virtual hand you could do it and move around so as well motion. lead yeah. motion there lead yeah. motion. Mm -hmm. as well as the uh, uh, Xbox controller look like yeah so you can easily go from gaming to just browsing the web with no with no change of a, a control. You have the same control for both. That's the beauty of the system is it's just like every place is a URL and the traversal is seamless. You just pass through a portal and the rules dictated in one room may be completely different from the last room that you were in. Yeah. So you know in one room you're in the sort of a default homepage like a lobby that serves as a social hub and then the next moment yeah you know you're in a first person shooter shooting the guy with rockets. Yeah. And uh, with no real you know overhead, no software to install, no real wait time, the geometric contents all just streaming in di dynamically. As soon as you get it you know, it starts running. So right on. Now, um, in the concert, you saw um, avatars of the people. Are you able to customize your avatar to what you want? Absolutely. So um, this is one of the things we need to work on more. We're just getting all the cornerstone features for the platform in, like you know, 3D positional audio support was recent. The ability to easily make environments by dragging and dropping them off web services. But concerning the avatars, uh, there's a professor at the University of Toronto. His name's Karin Singh. He wrote like Maya 1.0, Academy Awards for Technical Achievements. He did his PhD in '95 on VR interaction. Yeah, so he brings a lot of technical skill to the table, but it's just being here in LA, seeking some investment. We want to get the manpower, you know, the man hours behind adding the avatar support in. So we're technically capable, but it's a, it's how you allocate your time. But we're definitely looking to grow. 
right on. So. Now you're using the Oculus Rift. Um, is this something people can buy at home once they get the Oculus Rift, or how how will they get uh, this Genesis VR program? Right. So um, you think of it as like being like a Firefox or a Chrome, and that it's its own sort of software platform or a browser, if you will, that you just a one-time software install, and that you use as sort of your portal, your gateway to get to the VR-ready web. So it's a one-time software install, JanusVR.com, runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, Oculus themselves are holding back on the, you know, the Mac and Linux updates for the time being, but it still works on the DK2. And we're going to continue with the, uh, the, you know, the updates on the Windows side. Um, got the HTC Vive shipped in, so this is another one that I'm looking to see how that tech might uh, incorporate with it, both in terms of just you know, getting the headset working, but in addition, the, you know, the functionality that it offers, having room scale tracking, these unique controllers that they have and what I'm able to do with that. All right, now you mentioned JanusVR.com's website. We're also going to find social media. All right, so we are on Twitter, at official JanusVR. It's another way. We also have a healthy, active subreddit. So Reddit slash r slash JanusVR. Those are some of the two main ways right now. Right on, and uh, any patches updates will be sent on your website. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, so as we do updates, uh, it's sort of on a rolling release cycle. I'm updating sometimes three or four times a day. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I wrote an auto updater on the Windows side for that, but I update often. So um, those updates come frequently, but I also post about them on the Janus VR site as well as on the subreddit. And I uh, get a lot of community feedback quickly, you know, fix the bugs, that kind of thing. So it's been working. Uh, one other thing I forgot to ask you, you mentioned somebody, somebody created the Frogger game. Mm. Now, are you able to, are, do you allow people to submit their own creations, their own uh, variations of this? Um, yeah, so that's the thing is that um, it's very much unregulated. It's as open as the web is itself. I don't really have any direct control over it. So as easily as one can put an HTML file on the internet, on any HTTP server, one can create their own Janus room. I mean, if you already have an HTML file, you've already, in a sense, have a room. You've already gotten started with it. So, no, it's very open this way. There aren't really any constraints at all. Awesome. Thank you. James, thank you very much. Had a great time playing it. Thank you. Thanks. All right, guys.